Thanks for checking out another video on my channel. This is the second video in the series about us getting llamas. This is doing the wiring on the fences. The last video I put the posts in and this is doing the wiring, tensioning the wiring and uh, how to do some of the knots. Okay, uh, let's get on with it. In my previous video I just put the posts in but now I've done some wiring and I've made a box strut there and that's the gate that I referred to earlier as the PA gate up to our um, chooks that's Casey having a drink isn't it Casey? hey slobber chops it's been a beautiful day here for the third day of winter it got up to 21 degrees uh, it's about 16 at the moment but it's really still quite pleasant so let's have a look at the rest of this fencing. So there's the PA gate for, our, for the path up to our chooks. And there's the wiring that I did the other day. Which goes up to where there's going to be a gate up there. So there's that fence. I'm going to tension that top wire again. I'm going to put a wedge down behind that brace there and just move the top of that post back a couple of inches, maybe an inch. I've done a small box strut there. Which has pulled that post there fairly straight. But the most important thing is that that post there and that post there are really vertical because they're going to have a gate between them. And here's the other part of our fencing. This, I suppose, will be the closest part to the west. I've put a, a strut there to hold that post so I can tension those wires against that post. There's my little homemade wire spinner that I made last week just so that I could run the wire out without getting a tangle. That's got a little tow hitch and that goes on the back of the back of our ride-on MTD mower which I did a video on a while back showing how to stop or how to um, rectify a slipping belt on that when the pulley gets polished up. So have a look at that. So as you can see there's five wires on that fence and it goes all the way down to there, to that upright there, which is about that big tall one's about a meter in the ground. So that's not going anywhere. And to tension those wires, um, I used a wire tensioner. Well, that's the wire tensioner that I made. I made that this morning because I only worked out when I mean, you can buy them, but I only worked out um, a day or two ago that I was going to need one. Because I have been pulling it tight with pliers and stapling it, but that didn't work. What you do is you pull the wire tight with that. Then you knock that staple there in. Then you tie it off with a termination knot like that. Um, don't look to me for knots. Just get the focus. You want to go look at uh, Tim Thompson if you want to look at fencing stuff. He's probably one of the better ones. So, this is how you use this wire tensioner, you brace it against the post, you pull the slack of the wire through that cam there, and then you pull it round, and what I'm doing here is I've pulled it tight, and then I'm checking the tension of the other four wires to make sure I haven't taken the tension off of them, but I've got the tension about the same, and you belt that uh, staple in, and uh, yeah, they catch a little bit, but they, they come off. So this is the end termination knot, you go up and over the top and you poke the wire down through between the post and the wire. It's a little bit fiddly with gloves on and um, some people think you can't do it with gloves on but I, I have to because I've got soft hands. So then you go back under and over and then make your crank handle as you can see there. And you do four or five loops, really however many you like but four or five is more than enough and then you don't have to cut the wire, you just turn your crank handle the other way, turn the wire and it, it should snap. So that's this part of the fencing done. See I've braced that one there so it can pull against those wires there back to that post there which is kind of a box strut. Now that rail does look like it's on the piss but that's perfectly level as the ground goes uphill there. So this is the best bit because of course as you know as you go along you learn different things so that one's braced there and it goes up to 
five wires high here but four wires after that because it goes to a shorter post to our our boundary post there so those wires are all nice and nice and taut I would like them a little bit tighter but you don't want to go pulling fences over either and they'll keep llamas in I believe so yeah so that's what I've done today so that gap down there we're going to put that gate there and then for that front gate of the property we've got an old a really old 1920s gate with a with the cast iron fittings uh, in Australia they sunshine company used to make them but this is actually made by Simpson so I'll, I'll ride this I'll wrap this video up now and then tomorrow will probably consist of the next video will consist of me making the gates because I've been lucky enough to learn a bit about making gates at the dairy I work out I make a lot of gates I had to modify the wire spinner because the wire kept wanting to spring over the top not 100% sure why, so anyway, that, that works fine now. So that's it. Thanks for sitting through the video right to the end. The next video I post probably tomorrow night or the night after will be making the gates. I've got to make two small gates, uh, one to get access up to our chooks and one to get uh, into the back of the llama yard itself. So there's a few things you've got to be careful of when you make gates to get the squareness and the dimensions right. So hopefully I'll get them right on the video. And um, okay, we'll check that out tomorrow night. And um, once again, thanks for watching. Make sure you click the like, subscribe and the notifications bell.